Hey guys, welcome to ITS Tactical. Today I'm going to be taking you through a little DIY project we're going to do here on ITS, which is building a knot tying station, like you see behind you here. Um, I previously built this one after I went to uh, Boy Scout summer camp with my son. We saw these um, kind of similar stations set up there and they were having knot tying races. Um, by the way, I got the fastest knot tying time at, at, uh, out of the adults at camp. I had a kid beat me by a second, so there you go. Um, but anyway, these, this is kind of a replica of what I saw there. I wanted to kind of bring this back and I made one of these for my son's Boy Scout troop so we could have one there. But I also thought it would be great for everyone at home that practices knots and things like that. It's kind of big. Um, it spans about five feet. But if you have the space to build something like this, it doesn't cost a lot to build. Um, it's really made out of dowel rods and a couple pieces of uh, one by 10 by 12, I believe. I'll get the specifics on that. But Really, it gives you the ability to tie knots right on this, this post, which is great. Um, you'll probably also see something like this in all of our upcoming knot videos. We're going to start utilizing this when we do those, too. Um, but anyway, it was built to show the, uh, to demonstrate the six Boy Scout knots, um, which are the square, the square knot, um, your four hitches, which are the timber hitch, uh, two half hitches, a taut line hitch, and I always mess this up, and the clove hitch. And then you've got the bow line on the end there. Um, and it is a bow line. I know you guys are going to correct me at home, but there you go. Um, and it also uh, it can tie the buds knots too, which I had to tie when I was at buds uh, for underwater knot tying. You can also tie those five knots in this board too. Um, those are a little different. Um, you still got the square knot. Um, you still got the clove hitch, but then you've got the right angle. Uh, you've got the bow line still, and then you have the Beckett's bend, or uh, sometimes referred to as a sheet bend. So I'll kind of demonstrate those so you can kind of see the versatility of the board too. So uh, let's get right into tying the six Boy Scout knots and then we'll move on to the Buds knots. You can kind of see what this is all about. All right, so the test they had at, uh, at summer camp when I was there, uh, you could start with these two in your hands um, and I'll just kind of go through the test real quick. Like I said, I got this in 30 seconds at summer camp. Some kid beat me by 29 and supposedly the camp record was 13, which I, I highly doubt. So I've been practicing <laughs> trying to get to to 13, but I don't know if that's going to happen. So here we go. Square knot, clove hitch, taut line hitch, timber hitch, and two half hitches. and then the bow one. And that's what I did on the test too. <laughs> I dropped it. There you go. So those are the, uh, the six knots in Boy Scouts. Uh, let's demonstrate the five buds knots real quick. All right, so let me just run through the buds knots uh, real quick too. These are the ones that are tied in the underwater knot tying test. You may have seen our videos previously uh, where we did go through that whole underwater knot tying test. Um, but again, square knot, Clove hitch again, and the right angle, which is just the clove hitch with an extra wrap. And then you can run the bow line on this one. And use the last two here for Beckett's bend or the sheet bend, just like that. So as you can see, the, uh, the knot tying board is definitely versatile. Um, you can do a lot with it. I mean, it's great for uh, turning knot tying into competitions. I mean, I think it's a great way to, to continue your skill set and to, to continue to learn, too, with uh, one of these knot tying stations. So let's get into actually how to build one of these so you can make one at home. All right, guys, so let's talk a little bit about what you're going to need to put one of these little knot tying stations together, or I say little, but really. Again, it's five feet long, so one of the first things you'll need to do is locate um, a, these are one by 12 by 10s. Um, what's great about these two is that it's a 10 foot long piece, so basically you just ask the uh, hardware store you're at to cut it in half. So that's, uh, I highly recommend that. It'll save you from having to uh, do that cut on your own. I know Lowe's and Home Depot both have that service where they, where they will cut wood for you. Um, the post back here, 
is made out of a one and a half inch dowel rod. And when I went back to the store to buy the parts for a second one, I only found that they had one and a quarter inch dowel rod. So um, we're going to actually do the second knot tying station here with a one and a quarter. So we'll see how it goes. Um, the other thing is the small stanchions you see. There's three of these. Uh, these are out of five eighths inch dowel rods and you can pick up one of these. This is a 48 inch long piece that I had in the beginning. Um, but what we're going to do is it'll make enough, it's enough for two of them. Uh, same with the, uh, the longer, I believe that's a six foot dowel rod on the one and a quarter. Um, then you also need a couple of tools. You need a drill. Um, you're going to need a hacksaw or something to, to cut the wood with as well. So you need those pieces. Um, you're going to need wood glue because the actual stanchions here are wood glued in, which we'll get into. Um, you'll need rope, obviously. Um, I'm going to, on the second knot board, I'm going to use some, uh, some rope we've had here for climbing. It's kind of a worn out climbing rope that we're going to cut down for this. Um, but this rope, this blue and white rope, I think I picked up at Lowe's. It was fairly cheap too. So um, you want a good rope that's not going to, uh, I guess, untwist on you easily. That's one thing that you'll notice on this knot board. Um, but since the back of the knot board is just a, a hole and a, an overhand knot holding each piece of rope in, uh, you can really replace the rope easily if you needed to. But the different size sections that we've cut here, they are they're five pieces of 36 inch length rope as well as two pieces of 23 inch length rope for the square knot. You need kind of two smaller pieces to do the square knot. You don't quite need 36 inches for that. Um, they need some screws. These are one and five eighths inch uh, exterior screws. Um, as you'll see on the, uh, the original knot tying station, I actually stained this, uh, but this next one we're going to spray paint. So we're gonna turn it black and kind of ITS it out a little bit. So uh, you also need a five inch, five eighth inch wood, bear, wood boring drill bit, as well as a pencil for marking stuff. Um, this is a half inch drill bit for the, the rear, uh, for the ropes to come through. Um, I've also countersunk everything, so um, I, I really like countersinks. I try to use them on every project I do. Um, then you also need a standard drill bit for uh, making pilot holes. Um, that wood that I described earlier, the, the actual the 10 foot length uh, piece that makes up the, the actual front and back here, uh, that's pine and the rest is I think poplar dowel so and then also uh, if you feel so inclined I kind of dulled the edges of all the wood with some sandpaper you might want to do that as well but that pretty much sums up the uh, the parts that you're gonna need to build one of these so let's get into construction okay as mentioned sanding uh, basically you're just hitting the edges and slightly sanding the surface as you see fit I believe this is around 180 grit sandpaper. Um, you can even come back and hit it with 220 to make it even smoother. Next we're going to mark the holes that we'll drill the, with the 764 inch drill bit. So these will basically they're pilot holes that will uh, eventually hold the two foot or two five foot sections of board together in an L shape. Um, keeping in mind the thickness of the board we'll be screwing into, our holes will be spaced um, will be started about a quarter of an inch from the edge and spaced around six inches apart. You'll either need some clamps or a buddy to help you hold the L shape of these boards together as you drill the pilot holes. Um, this is really to ensure that the pilot hole also bores into the board below. All right, now we'll finish up the holes by countersinking them. I'm a big fan of countersinking holes. I think it really adds a lot to a project. Um, then we're going to add the 1 and 5 eighths inch screws in and start the assembly of the base of the knot tying station. Um, be careful here too not to uh, over torque the screws as you drive them in. Alright, what we're doing now is uh, marking that what will be the bottom of the station at approximately 4 and a quarter inches from the bottom edge. Um, these marks are at 12 inches, 30 inches, and 48 inches. Um, and we'll get drilled with a pilot hole and countersink uh, for a later insertion of the screws that will hold the three stanchions in that support the hitching post. All right, from the top side, we'll now use the 5 8 inch speed bore bit um, in those pilot holes we drilled from the bottom. Um, be careful here too and try not to route them too far. Um, what you saw me there doing is checking the depth with a section of 5 8 inch dowel rod. 
Um, you just want to make sure that each of the three holes is relatively the same depth. You're now looking at the back side of the rear board with the top at the bottom of the screen. Um, we've marked holes at 3 inches, 8 inches, 18 inches, 26 inches, 34 inches, and 42 inches, as well as 54 inches. Um, these are essentially your holes that will hold the rope, um, where the rope will come through into the back of the board. Um, I've decided on this station to use the, uh, the 5 8 inch speed bore bit rather than the 1 half inch drill bit. It uh, just helps keep the holes a little smoother. That half inch drill bit will tear them up a little more. So um, it only slightly enlarges the hole uh, with the 5 8 inch bit versus the 1 half. Now we're just going to countersink these holes at the front and the back of the board. Um, again, this is just to clean them up a little, give it a little bit better look. Next we're going to cut the three stanchions that you'll need out of the 5 8 inch dowel. And again, these are three sections of basically three 7 and a half inch sections. I'd suggest adding them with sandpaper too to uh, clean the edges up after you cut them. Now what we're doing is marking the 1 and a quarter inch dowel rod at 2 and a half inches. 20 and a half inches and 38 and a half inches. Um, basically we're trying to keep the holes as close to the top of the dowel as we can um, because you'll be routing them out as seen here with the 5 8 inch drill bit, uh, speed bore bit. Um, again, ensure with this part that you're not drilling too deep. Um, you can check it again with a 5 8 inch dowel rod. Um, you definitely don't want it to be too shallow. You want that dowel rod to, uh, to have plenty of room in there. So now what we're doing is uh, drilling a pilot hole in the bottom of the three uh, seven and a half inch pieces of dowel rod. Um, this is where that, this is basically just a pilot hole. So when that hole or the screw comes through the bottom of the stanchions, it's gonna, it's not gonna split those boards. And here we're just adding wood glue. Um, if you're sure of yourself and you're sure your cuts are even and nice, you can go ahead and put the glue in like I did in this part. Um, you could check this dry too. Um, making the fit together and the level and make sure everything came out okay. If it didn't, you'll need to trim it up a little bit. So now we're just adding glue to the top portion too and going ahead and affixing the hitching post to the top here. And again, you really do want to check this dry to make sure that uh, everything's lined up and level. All right, so now we're going to take those screws and come through the bottom. Um, I'm doing this when the glue is still wet. Um, this is just kind of I guess my uh, opinion there to do that. So almost the last step here is to go ahead and rattle can it or stain it. It's your preference. Um, rattle canning it will definitely save you some money. And then the last step here is to go ahead and cut your rope. Um, remember that a uh, hot knife is going to work wonders in this situation, especially for fusing the ends like I'm doing here. Remember you need two lengths of 23 inch rope and five lengths of 36 inch rope, which is around 20 feet of rope. All right, guys, so as you can see, we've now painted it with uh, black spray paint. That was the last thing to do, so just rattle can it with some, some quick, cheap spray paint from the hardware store. It's only a dollar a can, not a big expense whatsoever. Um, as you can see, it came out well, um, even with the one and quarter inch dowel rod. I think that's still pretty sturdy. Um, with the wood glue and the screws coming from uh, below holding it, it should be doing just fine. Um, We've test tied it a couple times, but I wanted to kind of take you through the last remaining steps. Um, the last thing again is to put the, uh, the actual cordage through the back and all that. I'll just demonstrate it real quick. Um, one thing to note too is that, remember you got two shorter pieces. Those shorter pieces are for the square, not all the way on the left side, the first two holes. Um, so all you're gonna do when you're putting these through is you're just gonna put that cordage through and you're just gonna tie a simple overhand knot, just like that and you pull them through. So that's the last step and uh, we'll kind of close this out and you can watch me kind of put the rest of the uh, our uh, cordage through there and let us know if you have any questions. Um, this is kind of an elaborate project to undertake but I think that it's one that uh, you'll really like and um, be able to use for a long time. Um, the total cost on this knot tying station was probably roughly 40 bucks or so um, really not a huge cost for the utility you gain out of it, so I'd highly recommend it. Uh, each and every one of you take a few. Uh, really, uh, I think our total elapsed time, what would you say, Rob, like an hour and a half maybe? 
if that. Um, again, this is my second one that I built, so I kind of knew a little bit more what I was doing than trying to figure it out for, uh, for myself on the first time. So hopefully my intent with this video is to show you that so that you'll be able to not have to spend so much time developing this yourself. So we'll close that with some last minute footage showing this getting put together. And thanks for watching and let us know if you have any questions.